Let's not waste any time with long drawn out introductions. This video will focus on two things. One, what we learned from Half-Life Alex, and two, how Half-Life Alex might confirm pre-existing theories regarding the Half-Life franchise. If you are not very familiar with Half-Life lore, some parts of this video might be confusing. If you require a recap, please refer to the two videos I have posted in the description box below before watching this one. Needless to say, there are spoilers ahead. Starting with number one. Roughly 13 years after the last Half-Life game, I was expecting a little bit more story than we got, admittedly. While the story we do get serves the gameplay perfectly well with charming characters and world building, it doesn't do much to expand on the pre-existing Half-Life lore. Emphasis on the word much. There are, nonetheless, a couple of useful hints offered to us. They are mostly there to whet our appetite for Half-Life 3, which actually seems to finally be in development, thank god, but they also hint at who the G-Man is and how the overall all universe of Half-Life works. First of all, we learn that the Combine were after the G-Man, and that they eventually caught him. G-Man is the Combine's quote-unquote super weapon that is referenced many a time throughout the game. The one that we were led to believe was Gordon Freeman, but we eventually found out it wasn't. It is hinted that they were after the G-Man because of his ability to quote-unquote nudge certain people and events. We'll discuss that along with how they were able to track him down momentarily. Second of all, it seems that G-Man wanted Alex ever since Half-Life 1. G-Man has been in the business of co-opting extraordinary individuals throughout the Half-Life franchise for his own purposes, and Alex just happens to be the next one. In exchange for saving her father at the end of Episode 2, Alex now goes into stasis to be used to further G-Man's plans at a later date. Now, what we don't know is whether or not Alex's capture in this game was planned or unplanned. Was reversing Eli's death at the end of Episode 2 the plan all along? Or did G-Man just happen to uncover a way to capture Alex in the course of his business? And that included bringing Eli back to life. Also, what happened to Alex in the five years that transpired between Half-Life Alex and Half-Life 2? Was she brought out of stasis right when Gordon Freeman came back on the scene? Or was she released long before that? Anyways, we're getting off track here. Back to what we do know. Well, actually, there's only one last thing before we get into a wider discussion. There is the silhouetted scientist speaking to the Combine advisor drone towards the end of the game. The one that's talking about moving G-Man to another location. A lot of people, including myself, thought that this was Judith Mossman, but it's not so certain. When Matthew Olson of US Gamer asked one of Half-Life Alex's writers, Eric Wolpaw, who this silhouetted woman was, he said he didn't want to talk too much about it, except that they have plans for her. By the way, the person who pointed out this excerpt to me was a friend of mine from my Discord server named Rickety. Thank you very much for that. When Rickety messaged me, he suggested it might be Colette Green from Half-Life Decay. Now, the evidence we have for this is pretty non-existent, but there is a couple things there. The haircut this silhouetted woman has seems to be much like the one Colette has, although I might just be projecting what I want to see onto the shadow there. Also, the unknown woman seems to have a knowledge of what went down in Black Mesa, and she is credited as scientist in the credits. You know, there were scientists at Black Mesa, so who knows? I have no firm belief in regards to who this woman is, it's just something I thought I would bring up. If it is her, it's interesting that we would get a callback to Colette Green before Adrian Shepard, you know? But anyways, on to number two. Before I elaborate on what some of these tidbits might reveal, I have to say the following. After going through Half-Life Alex's story, the immediate thing I put up on my social media is that the story we did get continues to validate my theories regarding who the G-Man is and what the overall story of Half-Life is about. I actually did videos on those theories roughly two years ago, and the people that watched those videos seem to unanimously agree with my analysis. I will briefly explain what those theories are, but for the sake of time, I won't go through all of the evidence. If you want a greater appreciation for what I am about to say, again, please go and watch those first two videos. In regards to who the G-Man is, I must first address the Combine advisors. It's clear that the Combine desperately want them, given the fact that they are shipping them by the train load in Half-Life Alex. So why do they want them? Well, according to an in-universe 
Twitter account set up by former lead Half-Life writer Mark Laidlaw, the advisors had a rich history before they were co-opted by the Combine. These tweets revealed the following bits of information. In the Vortigaunt culture, the advisors are known as Shu'ulathoi. These creatures are much like the Vortigaunts in the sense that they share a racial telepathy, a hive mind. In their larval and mobile state, they share vast amounts of information with each other. The knowledge they possess is infinite god-like. So precious and world-changing in its content that they apparently trade it like currency. Given this fact, it's understandable why the Combine wanted to co-opt this species. They wanted to discover their infinite knowledge and use it to oppress the universe. This is why the Advisors are the master race of the entire Combine Empire. This is why the Combine took over the Earth in seven hours. It's because they had that knowledge that they gleaned from the advisors. The Shaulathoi that had not been co-opted did one of three things, two of which are for certain and one we don't know for certain, and that has to do with my G-Man theory. One thing we know for certain is some of them merely tried to flee the Combine. The second thing we know for certain is that the other larval advisors did their best to thrust themselves into deep trances. So deep that the Combine could not extract the information the Shaulathoi possessed. Now, as for the third thing the Shaulathoi might have done, this has to do with my theory regarding the G-Man. One of the tweets Mark Laidlaw provides tells us that the larval, non-co-opted advisors can actually hatch. Apparently, their psychic strength is such that they can imprint upon their cells and dictate the form which they will take upon hatching. Based on this, I theorized that the G-Man is a hatched Shaulathoi, and his employers are larval Shaulathoi. He is carrying out their will as an interdimensional bureaucrat. The evidence for this is overwhelming, and I go through all of it in part two of my Half-Life analysis. For the sake of time, I will only deal with the evidence that is relevant to Half-Life Alex. Let's re-examine what Half-Life Alex tells us and why it might validate my G-Man theory. The Combine were after G-Man. How were they able to track him and capture him? Maybe the Combine were able to glean from the co-opted advisors where G-Man would be and how they could capture him. Think about it. If the advisors share racial telepathy, they could use that psychic information to pinpoint G-Man's location and catch him before he could teleport away. Also, we know that the Combine are after local teleportation technology given their interest in the Borealis in Half-Life 2 Episode 2. Since the G-Man 2 has demonstrated an ability to locally teleport, it would make sense that the Combine are interested in him. To conclude, I must address the whole concept of nudging that G-Man brings up at the end of the game. If the Shu'ulathoi possess godlike knowledge, knowledge that most living beings in the universe do not possess, and they were being pursued by the Combine, it would make sense to create a sort of ambassador, a bureaucrat that could preserve their lives and their interests, to make sure that their infinite knowledge did not fall into the wrong hands. This infinite knowledge involves the ability to manipulate people and events. If the Combine figure out how G-Man and the Shaulathoi are able to nudge things, then it's game over for the universe. It might be better that the Shaulathoi and G-Man use their infinite knowledge against the Combine, especially because G-Man and humanity share a common enemy in the Combine, but the situation isn't that much better. The fact of the matter is, the G-Man brought the interdimensional war to Earth by allowing the Resonance Cascade in Half-Life 1 to happen. He is also putting human beings into stasis through manipulative means, such as putting Alex into stasis in exchange for saving her father. By the way, speaking of Adrian Shepard, we haven't heard from him in the last two decades. It must be pretty crappy to be holed up in purgatory for that long. The order that G-Man is seeking to maintain is still a form of control over humanity and their free will. What Gordon Freeman, Alex, Adrian Shepard, and others symbolize are threats to the universal order of things. Like G-Man said at the beginning of Half-Life 2, the right man in the wrong place can make all of the difference in the world. G-Man is seeking to curb the power one man can possess by co-opting them. Otherwise, not only might somebody like Gordon Freeman overthrow the Combine's control, but also the Shaulathoi's control. And that, in my opinion, 
is what the entire Half-Life franchise is about. Overcoming greater masters until one can achieve absolute freedom. Absolute control over one's life. If one were to fail, then one's life is merely an exercise of inhalation. You are not living a full life or a free life. You are merely living a half-life. I understand a lot of this might be confusing to you. Again, I highly recommend you go watch the first two videos if you have not already, or at least the second video where I go into greater detail regarding who G-Man is. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I will address them as best as I can. Before you go, please give this video a like. It really helps my channel out a lot. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, featuring in-depth analysis of all your favorite franchises, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Finally, I want to give special thanks to Rickety, Nimrod, Athena, Core Ideas, and Quarantined Babbles for helping me with the script for this video. Until next time, stay yellow.